<laughs> I don't call it Cuban black bean soup, but we're gonna do like a, uh, just my version of black bean soup. Um, see what I'm gonna use here now? Instead of a canned chicken base or chicken stock, I cut, I got a whole chicken, cut the legs off and the thighs, and uh, we're gonna fry them up. Okay, so uh, just pat the extra water off so you get a little bit of. We cook that right into the soup, right into the beans. A few weeks ago I made a, uh, a Cuban sandwich, so we'll put this together with the, uh, we'll call it a Cuban black bean, but really Cuban black bean, uh, they do, they put lime in it, they garnish it, we're gonna, we're gonna garnish it Mexican style, but it's all the same, you know, uh, it's very similar to the Cuban black bean soup, okay? Yeah, the black beans, we'll probably do three quarters of a bag. That was the hell, we'll do the whole bag. Because Dave's going to take some home, right Dave? Yes yeah, sir, sure, I do believe that to be the case. Okay, we'll rinse them off real good and then maybe pick out a, once in a while I get a, look, it's a stone. Looks just like a bean. Yeah. Now pick out if you see any, uh, see there's a stone there. I'll bust your tooth. You know, cut some celery. You kind of do large chunks. We're going to puree it at the end. You got a smell coming off it already. Like if you just added chicken, chicken broth into it, you wouldn't get half the flavor you have coming off of this right here. Okay, we're going to pour the black beans. Put some salt. Put some pepper. Good amount of pepper. Garlic powder. <laughs> See the beauty is you'll have that chicken, it'll stew in that black beans. So you can pull that off and eat it. Then you, then you, you the by, again the byproduct you can have the soup left over. Get Rachel. No. Ah! No. See that? Isn't that beautiful though? That's gorgeous. The colors of nature. Look at that. Be beauteous, baby. Huh? Be beauteous. 
Look at that, the black and the orange. And the green and the white. Yep. So I let that cook a little bit. Just cook it all together for a little bit before we add any water into it. Okay. Okay, now what I have here is some, uh, I call it my soup starter. I made it, uh, I put, uh, what I put in there, uh, peppers, jalapenos, fresh tomatoes, onions, and stewed it up. It's barely covered. Just plain agua? Yep. All natural. Cook it from scratch. Cook it from scratch. It's always amazing to me that how the color comes out so quick off the beans before we even really start simmering them. Changing the color of the beans, man? Just the uh, immediate, immediate color coming off the beans. Into the sauce, you mean? Yeah, into the soup. San Marzano tomatoes, I bought these at the grocery store. They're all right, but they're not a whole lot of flavor in these compared to, I mean, I like uh, Red Pack. To me, I have more flavor than these. Everybody raves about San Marzano tomatoes, but they're all right, they're not great. I'm not going to use a whole can. They're in a book, but I tell you one thing. Are you crushing them with your hands, Jack? Yeah. I tell you one thing. They're all, they're all good quality, though. I, mean, I don't think they season them up very well. There's no, there's no little bit of salt added. But see, sometimes you get a tomato in a puree. These are a hundred percent tomato. There's no starch added to it, or uh, there's no paste. It's all. The ingredients are good. San Marzano tomatoes. Puree they make is, like I said, straight from whole tomatoes. Basil leaf, naturally derived citric acid and salt. So uh, the quality's there. We'll use the rest of that can maybe in a, uh, uh, when we're doing the shrimp. But uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut the backbone out of a chicken. We'll add it in there. So you got a little piece of the fat there. We'll put that in there. We'll cook a little bit of fat. I'll add some flavor in it because we hadn't put any fat into it. But here's what I do with the back. See? Come all the way down through it. And then the same on this side. And we'll cut them up. Put that into our soup. Boy, that's some goodness right there. So you could probably eat this for a dinner with some rice. Once the beans are cooked, eat the chicken out of it for dinner. And then uh, you have the soup left over. So we're gonna cover it up, bring it to a simmer, and we'll put it on the back burner. Let me let me taste it for, uh, we need the other seasoning. Why do you taste it like that with the raw chicken, Jake? Yeah, it's, it's coming to a simmer. Hey, already the flavor is great. Oh, really? Yeah, and the chicken hasn't even started to cook yet. Cool. Come here and try it, Dave. All right. Let, let it go. Okay, taste that. Taste that right now. Right? Right? Oh, yeah, very nice. Okay. Well, it also has a lot to do with that beautiful sauce you, your soup starter you put in. True. And that's All right. a la Jack, baby. Okay, so 
the beans are like three quarters cooked. So, uh, so now I'm going to pull the chicken out. And I don't mind, I'm going to pull some of the beans out with it. Because I'm going to puree, puree like half of them. The Howlin' Wolf going that day. Yeah, is that the same stuff that uh, Peterson? The skier is. Uh... I don't know. No. Did he burn you one? Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. For Christmas, right? Yeah, the London, the London session. A London session, yeah, uh, Thanksgiving. Nice moves there, guy. So you can feel with those tongs if there's any more stuff floating around in there. Yeah, all that chicken. Chicken's all blue. Black, blue, yeah. Incredible, huh? Yeah. See, I throw some of the beans, pull some of those beans out. That'll be the garnish in the soup, you know what I mean? Yeah. Are you trying to grab all the salads out that you can, Jack? Yeah. All the chicken. When it cools, we'll pull the meat off, and at the end, we'll put it back into the into the soup. Let that cool. Pull this. Oh, pull this together. I'll pull a little few more beans out. That's good. We've got about half and half right here now. Okay, puree this here. It's important with these, don't rest it on the bottom. With the heat, it'll melt the bottom of it. Just you got to lift it a little bit over, and not too high because it'll shoot it out. Got to make sure these are covered. That's why I kind of bring it off to the angle, make this side a little deeper. Well, this invention, every kitchen should have one. You get at a any Target's got them, uh, Walmart. 1995. You can't beat it. You know, making homemade tomato you know, marinara sauce, right in the pot, pureed at the end, soups. That's uh, awesome. Bro. All right, we're gonna. Uh, all the chicken's cool now. I just break it up, shred it up. I don't cut it. You know, you might get a little bone here and there in the soup, but it's all right. My mother used to always cook from scratch, and I remember growing up, people were kind of squeamish, you know, they, they bit into a bone or something in a lamb barley soup, or, but, yeah, I think, now I appreciate the fact that you cook it from scratch, didn't you? My mother cooked from scratch. That taste stuck all over the inside of my mouth. <laughs> See that back? It's out the back. Yeah. They call that the oyster, the uh, scallop. What? See that little piece in there is the best piece of the whole. Uh, whole tender line. Whole chicken. That's a piece of the back. There's no meat on that. What? Now these beans. A few of these beans are still just a little on the tough side. We probably need about another 15, 15 minutes. So check it out at this point, Dave. Yeah. It's a little bit thick. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna thin it out. We got, yes. as you tasted earlier, you got plenty of uh, flavor, plenty of richness. Now, when you're making that Wellington like that, Jack, you let it, everything rest like that. Yeah. Yeah, let's stay on this recipe, though, Dave. I'm just asking. For what do you mean, rest? I'm just sitting there. You're not. You're letting it cool. All right. Somebody told me that today. 
He said arrest. Huh? He said they're arresting him. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're arresting. I mean, it's uh, <laughs> that's arresting, and this uh, is working. <laughs> <laughs> now it, uh, you know, uh, hey, but you thought maybe you were going to throw me for a stump there, I see, because I, I, I was I was kind of focusing on what I was doing with the soup, but to answer, to, to an, correctly answer your question, Dave, the term arresting, I believe, yes, is when a roast comes out of the oven, Right. you let it rest. For a half hour, right? Because all the internal juices are seared on the outside. Got that. It's superheated inside. Yeah. And if you were to cut into it, it would just all it would just bleed right out. All the flavor. It would run right out. Flavor when, when you let it rest, it settles back down. It, it absorbs back into it. So then you know you let it get down closer to a. Uh, say when you pull a roast out, it might be 130 and inside. 140 internal. Right. You want to let it come down about 100, 110, and before you even touch it. Yeah, that way the flavor stays into the meat. That's cool, man. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for the extra elimination. <laughs> All right. Let's do one final test here. You can see the spoon I'm using, Dave. It was uh, Rachel and Lucy's baby spoon. How cool is that? I think it needs a little bit more salt, personally. A little bit. I think I wouldn't salt it. I think I'd let the people salt it and eat it. Just a little bit. It's hard for me to think about that. Right. Yeah, this is cool. That's Rachel right, Lucy's uh, baby spoon. Very cool. Just let this uh, come back to the simmer. Get those three quarter cooked beans. See, if I pureed the whole soup, you wouldn't have any texture in it. See that day where I left the beans whole? Yeah. I appeal, baby. That's half the meal. I appeal is half the meal. Yeah. Your point, you don't know it. <laughs> Show them them feet, long fellows. <laughs> All righty. To garnish the uh, the, the uh, black bean soup. So I put chicken in it. Sometimes you can cook it with a ham hock if you want. So we're gonna make some pico de gallo, cilantro. Stock and all. You know, if it's good, the stock has got flavor too. Rough chop. Like you see, we're running these cameras full time, Jack. As a pro, it could be uh, out on your feet. Well, no, it could be uh, it could be real cool to get into, you know, if you had one with real good ball bearings and the movements and stuff, and trying to the pan and do everything yeah. as you can. Pretty cool stuff. I think they have some that are like on a re on remote control. Oh yeah, no, they got all kinds Swivel of swivel cool, and cool stuff right, right now. Are you gonna put lemon in there too, Jake? Yep. Davey's learning. Davey's learning, baby. You got him, man. You got him, Toyota. Them buffaloes, they cannot play man to man, man. Remember them buffaloes, Jack? Yeah. And the Dunkin' Donuts? They can't play man to man, man. It's when <laughs> Buffalo, when Buffalo, I forgot who they were playing in the Super Bowl. Yeah. And I had come back up from uh, Texas. And uh, we go out, uh, we go out, I think we went to where, uh, Dave? Boston Chicken or? Dunkin' Donuts. Dunkin' Donuts? And there's a guy in uh, um, probably a Puerto Rican descent, and he uh, he said uh, we got talking about the Super Bowl, and he said uh, yeah them Buffaloes man they uh, they lost the game man because they don't know how to play that man to man defense man. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That was all cool. It's all good, man. You started laughing so hard, I thought the kid was going to throw a donut at you, man. That was cool. Mang to mang, mang. Hey, mang. 
And my, you know, my buddy, my buddy Tracker down in Dallas, he still, he calls me. And if I don't answer, he'll leave me the message. Them buffaloes, man. <laughs> they don't know how to play that man to man, man. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so it's Jimmy LaFave. He's one of my favorites. Turn right. that up a little bit, Dave. Turn what up? Oh, you don't know how to do it, huh? <laughs> That'd be the next lesson. That's Jimmy LaFave. He's out of Austin. <laughs> Oh. oh, I take that a lot to put it on crackers, man, as a snack, just like that. Hey, but after after you marinate it a while, it gives up the juice. I can drink it. Is it a whole lemon, Jake? Yeah, you uh, you that was a big lemon, so it's equivalent of about a whole lemon. No, you had uh, jalapenos. Yeah, onions. Onions. How much jalapeno? You had. One, one jalapeno. One jalapeno? Yeah, seeds and everything. Mmm, beautiful. You like it? I love it. See now, the soup The soup is going to be rich. Okay. And uh, it'll be so rich with the chicken. And this will pop it, you know, pop the flavor. <laughs> lemon, the lemon. So the Cubans squeeze lime into it at the end mm. to, 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 to cut the heaviness of it, the richness of the beans. Oh, and this? Yeah, but this will do the same thing. The pico de gallo. I'm on fire, man. I'm on fire right now. Take a check this, man. Get another big super sweep. See, that's a piece of skin. And at the end, you know, just check it out. If you get a piece of bone or a piece of skin. Very nice, brother. Okay, let's let this set up here today for about 10, 15 minutes. Okay. And then we'll uh, plate it up. I'll show you how we plate it. <laughs> Go ah, get a glass. <laughs> Busted, man. Busted. Oh, David, I think he used to do that with a gallon of milk out of the refrigerator. Your mom, Aunt Bev would catch you. She'd flip a wig, wouldn't she? <laughs> she turned that ring around and flipped me right in the back of the head with it. <laughs> and I would put that on the taste. Hey, that's uh, that's okay. on sale. That's on sale. It's the only grape juice for not from concentrate. Really? Kosher. Yeah. Very good. Oh, is it tasty? Very good. Give me a glass of it, Dave. Okay, Dave, we're gonna plate it up. Woo! Got a little bit too heavy of a simmer going, but we'll uh, we'll skim skim the scum off there. I know that's not a really palatable term, skim the scum, but that's what it is, Dave. But uh, look at that. See that? Lift it up over the top, Dave. Right over the top of it. Look at that. That's it right there, man. Ooh. Just natural flavor. Two legs and two thighs. We got this whole pot of soup. Okay, put it up on the board here. Yeah, you do, baby. The dog was all over it. She hooked me and bounced it at least 12 times today. Wait till you go to edit. Look. Look at that. You got bits of carrot. Now that's, that's, uh. That's a beautiful thing. Hey, forget, uh. Forget it. You know, Cuban or uh, Mexican. Hey, this is Jack. This is Daddy Jack's right here. It's my recipe. Look at that. Okay, check it. Okay. Okay, here's the deal here now. Uh oh, uh oh, we're getting fancy as the Turk would say. Oh, Mr. Fancy Pants. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's a pretty thing, baby. Uh oh, uh oh. Is that cilantro? Uh, that isn't that beautiful? Yeah, that's a nice little thing. Oh, pretty, bit, pretty damn nice there, Jackson, if I do How's say so myself. It's a pretty thing, man. Come around and take a taste. Yes, sir. You got a good shot there, Dave? Oh, yes, sir. 
Listen to that horn, Dave. You gotta get in it, Dave. You gotta get in a little piece of sour cream, man. Some of that chicken and a little bit of that pico to guy out, man. You gotta load it. Yeah. You gotta load the palate on the top. So, you know, ah, you know what you're doing. Grab the cream and just pull it down. Uh -huh. What I told Dave, I said when. This soup, you let it cool all the way down, refrigerate overnight, bring it back up to temperature. That's called curing the pot. And then just the flavor goes back into everything, and then when you reheat it, it comes back out into the soup. And, I don't know. Soup, second day, is always the best. It never, never, never as good as when you serve it right after you make it, let it set off.
Guide Sally's, Hartford, Connecticut. Sold out tonight. Snow Lodge, standing room only, Lucky. Where it should be. Gotta start, got start showing them greenbacks. Swing Street Blues? Honky Tonk. Honky Tonk. some vocals on it. Oh, that's a little more for vocals. <laughs> <laughs> to get, Can I, I owe I, you? I, I do a little bit. All right. Every day, every day I have the blues. Every day, every day I have the blues. When you see me worried in trouble now, but it's you I hate to lose. Every day. Every day. 
day, every 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 Hold on, it's uh, Daddy Jack's Cooking with the Blues with Mr. Lucky Peterson. That's right. In Dallas, Texas. That's Welcome me. to New England, bro. Thank you. All and right, we'll Lucky. We're going to finish the interview tomorrow. Okay, we're going to make a pecan breaded rainbow trout. My friend at, uh, at work, he, he brought me a, a caught it from the fish hatchery. What kind of trout would that be, Dave? That would be a big old rainbow trout. Rainbow. Trail. Got it uh, early spring here. Well, but tomorrow's the first day of spring. It's actually already spring. Oh, today? Today is spring today. Okay. So we're doing like 50% pecans, 50% bread, bread crumb. Okay. And then uh, I had a little bit of, uh, just a little bit of cayenne pepper. A little bit of cayenne pepper. Just for a little heat? Yeah, a little bit of heat. <clears throat> a little bit of salt, not much. The breadcrumbs have some seasoning in it. And uh, garlic powder. Black pepper. Seasoning is real important in cooking. Most people don't understand oh, yeah. that. Yeah. Otherwise, you just have nothing but blandness. English. station so we have our flour then for the wet you always got to go flour into something wet and then into our dried crumbs so uh, buttermilk Dijon Dijon into the butter huh yeah into the buttermilk That gives it the kick. The tartness, you know? Right. Okay. Is there a sweet and sour thing going on there? Uh, no, I wouldn't say sweet and sour, Dave. But, uh, yeah, I came up with this recipe at Chaplin's, my first restaurant I opened up. Wanted to look, you know, for something different to do with uh, trout. You know, because it was the low end priced on the menu. This one. Well, some people serve it with the head on, Jack. What is that about? Huh? So we cut it down the middle. That's the heat side of the spine? Yeah. Usually we uh, always buy them already boned. But, uh, I'm sure you got to do this. Best fillet job here, Dave. <laughs> you do five, ten, or twenty of them, you get it down pat, though. It comes back. 
the idea of the boning is you want a nice, nice smooth. You don't want to interrupt the fillets. You know the. You gotta be careful that center line there. Got a lot of bone in it. And uh I don't know if you can see, but you got these uh pin bones here. Try to pull them out because I saw them some one time, Jack, cook it one way, and then they just touched the bone, and the whole thing came out. The, these, these pin bones here? Yeah, the, the whole skeleton came out. I knew it was, I maybe I don't know cooking the whole fish, but you got the, you got the pin bones. See, the best is to pull them out with a needle nose plier. One of those famous pliers? Needle nose pliers. See in that drawer if I have any needle nose, Dave. Yeah. I mean, I don't, you know, I eat around them. I don't, I don't mind the bones so much. There's another trick you can, uh, you can pull them out with the tip of your trusty tongs, Dave. A trusty tongs shot is more along the lines of uh, having them in the kitchen. But some of the the smaller smaller trout, you get it. You won't you can eat them. You won't even taste them when you're eating them. Right. The bigger fish, they're, they're just a little more. Uh... Okay. Now, when you prepare a trout, you do that every time, huh? Well, normally they come already oh, done. Oh, okay. In the restaurant world. Yeah, this is a big trout, so I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna cut it in half. And. Uh, Okay, well, we dipped it in the flour, the uh, buttermilk, buttermilk and, and Dijon, then in the crumbs. I put a little bit of whole, uh, a whole butter into it. Okay. This is simmering up very deliciously here. Look at that, Dave. Very beautiful, huh? Isn't that amazing? Now, when you cook, look at it. Look at the chicken. The color, black. Now that's from the from the, from the beans. beans. Look at that. That's amazing. The, the Brazilians, they do this. This is like an actual dish the Brazilians do. Yeah. So uh, it's for fuchada, they call it. Fuchada. Yeah, they do it with chicken, pork, sausage. They put everything and cook it in the beans, just like this. Nice. Yeah. Okay, that's simmering nicely right there. So we'll turn it down a low. Okay, so like I said, we floured the trout. Uh, we did a butcher job filleting it, but it's still nice. Two nice fillets out of it. Jeff, my uh, the mechanic at work. Caught these, he loves to fish. I said maybe we'll take him out day of fishing now. Absolutely. We'll do some uh, striper fishing. Yeah. But um, so then uh, into the the flour, into the buttermilk and Dijon, into the 50% uh, pecans, 50% breadcrumbs, seasoned up with garlic powder, black pepper, a little bit of salt, and a little bit of cayenne pepper. From that, I pop it in a 325 degree oven. What? Now, why do you do that, Jay? Just a slow cook and finish it up. The trout is ready. The common breaded rainbow trout. So we'll eat, we'll eat one of the fillets, Dave, and we'll save the other half for my buddy at work. Absolutely. We'll save you the fish. Now, you can uh, serve this with... Uh, 
powder sauce. What? Grilled purist, uh, we like it, we, you know, I like it just plain the way it is. Playing with the trout coming through, not masking it with, uh, you know, powder sauce or anything. Try it out, Dick. Try it out. Okay, buddy. Look at that coming right off. Come on this side, Dick. Woo! Mmm. Wow. Dave, even on. Uh, even though it's uh, like a, it's a, in a hatchery, it's, it tastes a thousand times better than what you uh, farm raised that you get in the restaurant. Really? The flavor. The, you know, like uh, the silty type flavor. You don't get that much in. Uh, no, commercially, when you buy it commercially, farm raised. Well, it's because they feed whatever they feed. Wow. Would this be considered a wild trout? No. No? Farm. I mean, they're in a hatchery. Yeah, they're hatchery raised. They're fed, uh, they're, they're fed whatever the hat, that particular hatchery feeds them. But a wild trout, it eats bugs and other fish and, and crustaceans. The flavor is, is and the meat, the texture of the meat is all different. What do you think? Beautiful. Huh? I'm, I catch more trout than anybody you know. That's why not? And I've never eaten a lot of trout. And this year out west, we ate rainbow trout out of the Snake River. Yeah. It was unbelievable. They really? Like blow your mind up. Really? Yeah, we just, all we did was uh, throw them in one of those wire cookers and cook them over the fire. And then they fell apart. Remember, Dave, we'd go for first day of hunt, uh, fishing season? Yeah. We'd pack a dozen eggs, a loaf of bread, and a can of Spam, mm -hmm. just in case we didn't uh, catch anything, right? Mm -hmm. Remember we'd go to uh, camp out in Valley Falls? Yeah, we'd catch a little brook trout. We catch a little brook trout and uh, flour them up, pan fry them, salt and pepper, that's all we ate. Yeah, but those were wild fish. Those, those weren't pasture fish. This is great, though. This is beautiful. And that simple recipe. I don't think... I mean, you could you could serve this with a tartar sauce. We do it in the restaurant, but it's eat. all on it's all on time, dude. You know, huh? It's all on how you cook it. Like, you're using like, your recipe, but you cook it, you ground it on the one side, and then you put it in the other. Yeah. How long is it in the oven? Fifteen minutes, twenty minutes. Yeah, you could eat the skin. Most people think the skin is the best part. Mm -hmm. Good. Logo. See ya. In the restaurant, usually people won't eat the skin, so I just bread. I just bread the top half. One side, yeah. Flour both sides. Dip it, dip it on one side in the uh, buttermilk and Dijon, and then one side in the crumbs. What am I hearing? Oh, the dryer. Dryer. Woo! Another winter day. 